crowd will just work well. Um, hello, I am in my garage grabbing an apple for child snack time. Hopefully, casting his video is working, but I just heard yelling, so maybe not. <laughs> And uh, our fridge, I don't know if it's the humidity or what, but it's not getting the, um, there is screaming. Hold on, I'm going to stop recording. Okay, oh, sorry. <laughs> Technological difficulties, you know. Right. Um, so, yes, our fridge just uh, is not staying cold. So I like got an apple for myself and then I was like, it's weird to think that this apple doesn't feel cold. So I just like stuck our food thermometer into it and it was 54 degrees. So luckily we have fridge space in the main fridge and it's fine. But um, another thing to look at. Yeah. But, I'll um, something. yeah, always like three something. Right. Um, but yeah, so the whole point of this is I wanted to get on my soapbox about <laughs> willpower not actually being the thing you need when you want to change how you eat. And this is my mom, Melissa. Hello, if you haven't met her. Hello. <laughs> um, and she's eaten healthy for lots of years. Like I remember when I was a kid being like, okay, we're gonna, I don't know what you did then. I guess, what did you do that? I was thinking back to what I did then and it probably wasn't actually very healthy. <laughs> Um, but with tried, I tried. Had, but went I with the trying. research you knew then yes yeah I was always trying to eat healthy and I think a lot of that was you know cooking at home was the yeah thing, like not, eating, not a lot. eating yeah yeah but I also used a lot of convenience stuff because you know there really wasn't the understanding then I don't think about processed food and you know, box mixes and, you know, yeah, cooking from scratch. I did a lot of that, but there was also a lot of boxes and bags and cream and chicken stuff. And yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And probably compared to like eating fast food. Yes, that was better, but still, yeah, not as great as it could have been. More vegetables, right? Yeah. So, um, so the reason why, uh, first of all, I, my first experience with like, you don't actually need willpower to stop eating whatever, whatever, was when um, I started taking probiotics and realized that like, oh, it's actually kind of easier to not eat sugar. But your story is even more dramatic than mine. Mine was like pretty gradual. So tell your... Yeah, I mean, I that. Mean, it's funny because I, all that healthy eating era when you guys were younger was like the low fat healthy eating but yeah. I actually remember being a kid and being like well I really tried butter I probably just won't start eating butter because when I'm an adult and I have to like lose weight or get healthy or whatever <laughs> I'll just have to cut it so why bother adding it yes and I remember like buying all of the lower fat options lower fat dairy lower fat everything um mm -hmm. but also then sugar was just kind of like it's just sugar it just you just burn it up like it doesn't really do anything okay. and so it was like sugar's no big deal and fat is the enemy and so um we ate a lot of sugar and I don't think I like being removed from it now looking back I'm like yeah I knew that I couldn't stop eating sugar like some people would give it up for Lent and I was mm -hmm. like that no I Why would you do never that? do that <laughs> um so yeah when I started taking probiotics I was like um just I I really didn't change my diet I just kept eating whatever yeah. I was used to eating but one day it wasn't really like you were like after something specific you were no. just like I don't know this is good right I should just right. I'll try it yeah. because just like vitamins I had been taking for years or you know I, I fish oil I was always taking fish oil like I knew that was good for your heart so I was like well probiotics I know they're kind of like you know the the latest thing that's probably good for me and I should just take them right. even though I didn't notice the big difference from vitamins or fish oil or I could see it in my um lab values that the fish oil was helping but you know it didn't feel any different so yeah so I had this habit of every uh day at 
about three o'clock. I could kind of, I didn't have to really look at the clock. I could just tell it was three o'clock <laughs> because I would have this drastic dip in my energy. And so that's when I would have my, the bowl of M&Ms. I'd have my handfuls of M&Ms. And um, this one day I just like, didn't want the candy and actually picked it up and put it back because I had the thought in my brain, I don't really want that. And that was, I remember thinking that was really weird. What did I just think? <laughs> Cause I had never thought that about candy before. Like Baby thought, thought about candy. Right. And I put it back and I thought, is it possible that those little microbes in my gut are actually changing the way I'm thinking? Cause if so, that is kind of freaky. Like it was a little freaky. Um, right. it was, so it felt like it was such a, like outside of my normal thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. And then I just decided, well, let's see if I can go without eating sugar because I never had before. <laughs> um, right. And really, like, I would eat sugary breakfast cereal. And if it wasn't a sugary breakfast cereal, it was Cheerios with brown sugar on it. Um, yes. <laughs> and it's delicious, but <laughs> um, sugary something, you know, usually is like a little something after lunch, something in the afternoon, ice cream at night. So it was like all through the day, I would have a lot of sugar. Yeah. So I just decided, like, I'm going to try one day without sugar. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like if I can do it, I'll be so amazed. So I right. did and it wasn't that hard. And so I tried a couple more days and I finally was like, I think what if I just extend it to a week? And it went uh -huh. on. I, I was able to go for a whole month without having added sugar. Now I didn't count things like ketchup or yeah, like sugar from like too short to count things like ketchup. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I didn't not a, yeah. I just did, you know ice cream, candy, Pepsi, all my usual. Yeah, I call it things that like the only point of it is to be sweet. Yeah. Like that's straight. That's what I call straight sugar. It's like nice. its only purpose is to be sweet. Yeah. 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 Um, and so then um, I noticed all these things that changed. Like I was right. having really bad hot flashes at that point. I was not sleeping great. I mean, I've always had anxiety, but all of those things had started to change. And I was like, wow, it really, if you would have told me that I had to stop eating sugar just by myself, I would have been like, it's impossible. Never. Right. I, I right. didn't have the willpower to do that. Like I just, right. and so, but taking the probiotics first and helping my gut get more balanced, it was like working with my body to not right. want it. And then now I can easily eat sugar. Like it still tastes good. I still enjoy it. But then right. the next half hour, I don't think about it anymore. It's not like it starts, you know, because I think sometimes when you try to use willpower, if you give in, then it's just like, yeah, forget it, you know. But this is actually like a thing where I can eat it and let it alone. Then till the next time, you know, I decide that I want to eat it. It's not just a, I have to have it. <laughs> Right. Well, and yeah, it is harder when it's like the dam has broken. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was my first experience with like thinking willpower is not all that it's cracked up to be. And then in coach training too, it's like, well, your actions are coming from your emotions, which are coming from the sentences in your head. So um Let's see. Now that I cut everything up, where can I hit it for a second? I guess I should actually put everything away too. Um, <laughs> um, so for example, when you were like, I don't want that, right? Like if you were going to get there without a probiotic, that would still be a good sentence in your head to have. Mm -hmm. um, it would just be that if you tried to jump straight there from sugar is the best. Of course I need sugar. I can't go a day without sugar. Who goes a day without sugar? Right. Then that would be like wild. Like that's too big of a jump for your brain. Right. So, um, hold on. This is going to be putting away pretzels. Okay. <laughs> so, um, 
it would require like working your way there with bridge thoughts of like, maybe sugar is not all that it's cracked up to be because that's just in my head from willpower or maybe um just skipping it for a couple hours would be fine um and I think it's so interesting that like uh we talk a lot now about curiosity and compassion but you totally started your month of no sugar with curiosity of like well can I just do it for one day um and like you can do that with or without probiotics too right I'm just yeah. like well what did it feel like to do it for one day what would it feel like to do it for three hours what would it feel like to um have a piece of fruit instead of a piece of chocolate or a drink um of water with lemon instead of a lemonade or mm-hmm. right like it's that like curiosity yeah so um that's the second thing of like people need to stop because willpower is in the action line right um so it goes thoughts feelings action willpower is like right there at the end of like just contain your right but what's fueling it usually is like well I can't be the only one not eating sugar or like oh it's been such a busy day I should totally have a cookie or like even just like wow that looks really good and one of the best examples of this that I love is um, a lot of times with cravings, it feels like it skips thought because even like tiny little babies who don't have language can see the package of the snacks that they like and go, ah, 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 right? So, Sometimes it feels like it just skips the I want that sentence. Um, Because like if I see a package of Oreos, like it stands straight out to me. Like we were at my brother and sister-in-law's house the other day. And they're like, oh, they have Oreos. (laughs) (laughs) And, but at work, right, there's a whole bunch of different cultures. And when there are snacks out, in packaging that I do not recognize. I have no idea what's inside. It is completely neutral. I have zero thoughts about like, even if I was a picture on the front, I don't know if it's salty or sweet. So I have zero cravings because I have zero thoughts about like associations with that packaging. So even if it feels like it skips thought, that's just because like our brains are really good at associating dopamine with the package it comes in (laughs) um but the thought is still I want that right Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah the food itself is just a neutral thing like when I see packaging from other cultures that I'm like I don't know what that is it's completely neutral um and Oreo packaging is still completely neutral it's just that I have a whole lot more thoughts about it (laughs) than (laughs) because over many years of eating many different flavors of Oreo (laughs) and like good memories too. And um, so yes, Uh, willpower, however, is like too late, right? Because by that point, you've already had a thought, you've already had an emotion and now you're trying to insert willpower here to block all that. Mm -hmm. and it's just it's too late right so you got to go farther back up the line to different thoughts that will give you different emotions because if you're feeling the emotion of deprived that's so much harder to like battle through than if you're like I don't want that it's kind of weird that I don't want that and then you feel curious right? right which is a totally different right like situation but another feeling could be like you know what? I don't have to eat that. And then you feel empowered versus feeling like, Oh, I saw it. Now I have to eat it. That's the rules. (laughs) That's the rules with the Oreos. You see it, you eat it. And it's, it's not, it's just, we all, we made it up. (laughs) Uh, So you can unmake it up too. Um, so recently then too, you have been changing how you eat a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. Um, because you've had different sentences in your head about food. Yeah. So I was curious what some of those are. 
Yes, um, it's very interesting because one of the things that I think a lot, and I wrote it down, um, mm -hmm. because I think it's really important, is um, I I am allowed to eat whatever I want to eat. Yes, when that I, is such a good thought. I'm yes. glad you said that. <laughs> because when I think that, I think, oh, there's no longer any like man with the clipboard, you know, that, that vision of there's a person standing over your head saying, you're not allowed to eat that. You're not allowed to eat that. You know, I just remove that. I am allowed to eat whatever food I want to eat. Then that puts the responsibility on my shoulders to decide what I want to eat because I think I mean, we've talked about this before, like that internal, um, battle with yourself like when you tell yourself you're not allowed to do something or you have you should do it then you argue yeah. with yourself and so I think when you say like I'm not allowed to eat Oreos then it's like well that that's not right like am I supposed to go the whole my whole rest of my life and not eat an Oreo like you argue with it and then <laughs> you're just, all of those sentences lead to I feel so deprived I'm gonna go my, the whole rest of my life with no Oreos <laughs> a pity party Right. Sucks and to be me. Right. So when I take that away and just say, I'm allowed to eat whatever food I want to eat, it's all okay. Then my next thought is, okay, but then what do I want to eat? And mm -hmm. um, one thought that I've had that's really been in an interesting, I've been curious about this thought a lot. I heard mm -hmm. it say it is food is information for your body. So it's, it's not just calories. It's not just fuel, which it is, but it's also information. And so I've been thinking about that because somebody like took it way down to this, like every bite that you eat is what your body is made of. Like the, the nutrition in that food is building your cells. Like what uh -huh. else are you made of? If not our food, Pretty like. Yeah. You know, the only thing that's going in Maybe is oxygen and air, right? But like yeah. those and can't like water. make something, right? Like right. they're using the metabolism process, right? But yeah. yeah, they're used to burn up the food that we eat. So okay. Okay. it's like, so then I was like, and, and the person said like, so what do you want to be made of? You know, mm -hmm. like, and I guess as I'm getting older, I'm more like, I don't want to be made of Pepsi and potato chips anymore. Like. <laughs> That, that is like, I'm worth more than Pepsi and potato chips. I yeah. want, you know, I want to be strong and I want to be active and I want to feel good. And like, I want my body to work the way it's supposed to work because I see so many people my age dealing with the start of chronic illnesses or having dealt with chronic illnesses already. And mm -hmm. I just am like, you know, I'm allowed to eat whatever I want. I really would rather eat food that is good information for my body to build into my cells the information it needs to work right. And so okay. that has like totally been like very freeing because the obvious answer to what helps, you know, your body work the way it's supposed to is real food with real nutrients and not boxes and bags and chips and Pepsi and M&M's, which is what I loved before. Um, right. And that's not to say that I would never eat a chip or, you know, whatever, because I, right. again, I really believe I'm allowed to eat whatever I want. So yeah. there are times I choose that, but I choose it knowing this is not ideal, like, highest quality information I'm giving my body right now it's it can handle it you know we've got processes in place to handle it but I don't right. want to overdo it <laughs> right well and that's like it kind of seems like um you know if I let Remy have my phone a little bit longer so I can do something I'm like this is not a hundred percent in line with my parenting values and I am going to choose it for this moment because I'm so sleepy and I need to get my like vitamins and my drink and my like, yes. get some caffeine in me. Right. Uh, I just, I'll just let you sit here for five minutes instead of it taking 20 minutes or continuing this morning was like 
it was like two hours after the first time I thought that of like, oh, I need to get all my morning stuff so I can not. And then I'm sitting there falling asleep reading books. And then she stole my phone. And I was like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> right. I like started saying, it's not time for, it could be <laughs> time for it. <laughs> like sometimes, as long as you're like choosing it. And that's the thing that I think when you are wanting willpower, it's because you feel so out of control of like, I just, if I do eat the one Oreo, then I'm eating six Oreos and like, ugh. and so it feels like more willpower is the answer to like be in control of this instead of like sometimes intentionally choosing to have one Oreo, but only one. And then like, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think the thing about willpower is it, it just doesn't, you can't keep it up forever. And so Mm -hmm. when you let down it's just always so like if you're like me and you tend to beat yourself up about stuff like that, then you beat yourself up about it too. Yeah. So not only yeah. have you eaten food that you didn't want to eat really, like you had chosen yeah. not, but then you went back on your word to yourself, then you beat yourself up because you didn't follow through and it just right. starts this. And then how can you ever, you know, change? Like it just, yeah. you're just going to stay in this spiral of yuck and it just, I don't know. It's so sad. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like that, like we think, and I have a freebie about this, but I'll just summarize it real quick. That we think beating ourselves up will make that spot painful enough that we'll change and move someplace else. But it's just so, um, it breaks the teamwork on team you so bad that like, why would I go try a new thing when, when I fail at that, I'm just going to get beat up about it. So might as well just keep eating chips instead of like setting a goal to not. And then something will happen because I don't trust myself. So I'm automatically assuming that something's going to happen that I'm not going to keep follow through on it. And then uh, I'm just going to get beat up by the bully on team me right. and uh, Mr. Inner critic or whatever. And so we just stay stuck there because um, there's no teamwork to get yourself out. There's mm-hmm. no like, um, I like how Dr. Becky says confident leader voice. I think it's confident leader or kind leader, but just like, oh, she says sturdy leadership, right? Like there's no sturdy leadership to be like, okay, yeah, we ate some chips and the cookout was really fun. And I'm not a horrible, horrible human being that is good information about my struggles right now. and. I'm going to keep going now. Like, right. Like, yeah. yeah. And I think when you have that kind of ability to say, well, I, I didn't follow my plan as intended. However, what can I do now to move forward? It, right. It's so much faster, I guess, from like mm-hmm. wallowing in the feeling terrible and then you just eat more and then you feel more terrible and to eat. like saying well, what do you do when you're having a terrible day you right. eat more obviously right. and you just right. made yourself have a terrible day by being so harsh on yourself right. yeah yeah and then you know you always like I was just talking to a neighbor this morning she's like when I get stressed like I that's when I go eat the stuff I know I shouldn't like the stuff that I know I don't really want to eat but when I'm stressed yeah. that's what I go eat and right it's true then you stress yourself out more and then you want to eat that more <laughs> so um but I noticed like when I, now I'm more like, well, that wasn't ideal. I could have done better in that situation, but what's done is done. Let's move on. What can Uh I do today? Like, and without Uh saying, like, I used to kind of do the like, okay, well, now we have to be really good. Now we blew it. Now we have to be good. And we can only have, you know, vegetables and lettuce and like, you know, celery. (laughs) Just go to a total unsustainable other extreme. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And that yes. also does not help because now your body's like, whoa, whiplash. Now you were feeding me all this stuff. Now I got to live on the salary. Right. And then of course you crave food because you're not eating enough to feed your body to give it what it needs of the good stuff. And so, yeah, it just, <laughs> the pendulum swing and the, all of that is, yeah. it's not a happy place to live. <laughs> Right. It's exhausting and painful. Yeah. 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 Well, and like, um, what do you think you would tell yourself if you're like, now you have that like compassionate leader voice of like, 
you don't have to, right? Because sometimes um, part of being a good teamwork person with Team U is, hold on, pause recording, uh, because I don't know. Okay, resume. Part of being a good team player on Team U is not beating up on your past self who is like, oh, I was so dumb, right? Like, <laughs> um, because again, that just sets up present you to be like, well, whatever, future me is just going to judge me anyway, <laughs> right? And so like, usually we think like future me is going to be awesome and just like have it all together. And I get way too optimistic about like, oh, I'll totally be able to do all that. When like, I don't change that much <laughs> in a month, <laughs> right? Um, and then like present me is just like, oh, you know, I'm, you know, better than I was, but not as good as I'm going to be. And um, yeah, it can be easy to be hard on your past self. Like, and there's all the things about like, well, you're doing the best with what you knew and things like that. But what would you tell your past self that you're like, well, yeah, <laughs> I I have thought about that. And especially as I've learned more about um, how food is made and some mm -hmm. of the sneaky ways that they make food so good that you, <laughs> right? I really do feel like looking back, well, no wonder I ate those things because uh -huh. there are whole like methodologies for creating the perfect potato chip and the the most yes. right amount of salt that I want to keep eating them or the Pepsi that's the fizzy like I still it's so funny because I can still remember the feeling of like oh this Pepsi is so good I'm yes. sure if I tasted it now it would taste disgusting but right. maybe maybe not <laughs> I don't know I'm right. not, yeah but they make it like in a certain way that it it makes you want to eat more and so right. I think that has helped me to realize like I, you know, I was kind of set up to want all this stuff, like, because it's, of course, and, and learning too about dopamine and how our brain wants that. So that's just being human. And uh -huh. my, my dopamine hits of choice were M&M, yeah. Pepsi chips, like ice cream. Yeah. And I just, you know, so yes, there, there have been times where I thought like, oh man, I really, I'm really lucky that I didn't just wipe out my health in some ways for as much sugar as I've eaten. Um, but yes, to think like I, I really was trying, like I was probably yeah. reading more about nutrition and caring. Right. About I just didn't have all the information and I'm still learning things now that I'm like, how have I not known this? <laughs> yeah. But you can't know everything. Well, and I mean, sometimes like, it's like, how did just society not know this? Like the weight loss studies that they've done with gut health. I'm like, why do we not talk about this all the time? But um, I was talking with a coworker, I think, I think it was her. Yeah. That we were talking about um, taking pictures and just how like, um, the whole thing of like, oh, look, that's the picture back when I used to think I was fat, right? That like, that like all, that's all you think about when you look at your picture is like, how much do I weigh? How much do I weigh? <laughs> how much, right? Like, do I look good? Do I look fat? Do I look skinny? <laughs> right. And um, I said like, why do when, why do women like generations of women think like this? And she's like, because it made a lot of people money. And I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. All the diet stuff and everything like, or it makes a lot of people money to make the perfect chip, right? And then it makes a lot of people money to try to rescue you from the perfect chips, right? Yes. And um, it does, there is that just like cultural messaging of like your weight is the most important factor in your health and your beauty and your value to the world, right? That like, um it's just like the air you breathe. It's hard to not think that like your weight is the thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think, why does that relate to what we we're just talking about? Because, um, I think just because when you think about individual willpower, you're not thinking about all the factors at play. Like you said of like, well, people study how to make the perfect chip. 
And mm-hmm. you're just being a human if you're like, I agree, that is the perfect tip, <laughs> right? And um, individual willpower also doesn't factor in all those cultural messages that you may or may not have to disengage from a little bit to make it light enough to have curiosity or compassion versus this is so serious. You have to pull it together. And so much pressure, right? Like the cultural messages of how your health and your weight and your looks need to be makes it so much harder to not think it's no big deal if you eat a couple of chips. Right. Yeah. And then I think I've seen so many women do such extreme things to try to accomplish their goal if their only focus is their weight or what size of clothes they wear, whatever that is. Um, mm-hmm. They will do such extreme things that it's almost like damaging their health in a different way than overeating. Because was. weight is more important than overall health because right. it determines so much about your beauty and your mm-hmm. status or acceptance or the way people treat you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. people compliment you if you lose weight. Oh, you look so great. You've lost weight. Mm-hmm. Um, but they don't say, oh, you look so great. I can tell you're metabolically just glowing inside. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And I think that that really is sad. And I think the other thing that I think people don't understand is that there are so many um, small, fairly easy steps they can take to kind of live in the world we live in and manage it. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you can't avoid all the commercials for Doritos, for whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to have a birthday party. You're going to have right. a s'more, you know, right. set out for you. I mean, there's going to be those things. And I think one thing that I that's helped me a lot too is learning that there are ways for me to, um, you know, some small things like, um, yeah, not eating sugar by itself. Like if I'm going to eat yeah. sugar instead of like what I used to do, I would eat when I, a meal. And then I was like, well, I can't eat anymore cause I'm full. So I'm going to wait for dessert. And I would wait for dessert till I was hungry again. Mm-hmm. Three hours later, empty stomach, eat the dessert, which mm-hmm. actually is the big problem with spiking your blood sugar and your insulin. And then you crash and then you need more sugar. And that's what I was doing. Mm-hmm. all the time. Right. So now sense. I'm just like, okay, if I want something sweet, I will eat it at the end of a meal, which then you don't tend to eat as much because you're full already. It's and not like, this is my calories for the next three hours. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't affect, I mean, um, glucose goddess on Instagram, like you can see her charts. She has yeah. made funny, like fun, like lighthearted. Yes. yes. And added that layer of, this isn't such a big deal. There are these simple things you can do, you know? Yeah. Eat- your first eat your sugar after or carbs of any kind after you've had fiber and protein and fat um mm-hmm. and so literally that is not hard to do like it just becomes mm-hmm. a habit and then so that just kind of kind of absorbs a lot of the problems that you get from just eating too much sugar or whatever the food is you know mm-hmm. i think um not everyone is a sugar person like i was right. with right. other stuff but um Figuring out how to fit in occasional things that you like in mm-hmm. a way that isn't so hard on your body. Like if you're really wanting to take care of your body and really seeing like, this is it. I get this one body. This is all I get. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't want to like stress it out, like beat up on it by, you know, either flooding it with stuff that's not helping it or depriving it of, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm. Just fat and protein. Eating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, really. And then I've really been learning too, like eating protein at breakfast. It really, like she says that all the time, the glucose goddess lady. I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Like I eat some protein. How much difference? It makes such a difference. On the day <laughs> that I have eggs and ham and cheese on sourdough, I can go from nine o'clock breakfast to two o'clock and not even think about food. When mm-hmm. I just have my like toast with um, almond butter and honey, noon I'm like where is the food I'm starving yeah so those (laughs) yeah like they really you can make it easier on yourself 
by choices that you make. And I'm like, this is so decadent to have eggs and ham and cheese on sourdough. Yeah. This like, it's right. not deprivation. That's like a treat and it actually right. helps you down the road. So yeah. Right. Yeah, it's true. Um, What was the th sentence you said? I only get one body. Yeah, that is a sentence that could be really good for some people depending on where you're at with not beating yourself up, right? Because you could use that sentence to totally beat yourself up and be like, can you believe you only get one body and this is what you're doing, right? Or you can do it like, well, I only get one body. So do I want to eat Oreos or do I want to eat mango, right? <laughs> or do I want to eat potato chips or do I want to like yeah make some toast even like mm -hmm. so both of those things are I'm still getting carbs but with the carbs I'm getting a little bit more fiber and a little bit more vitamins and minerals and it's still tasty like right um yeah so yeah I think that is like could potentially be a very helpful sentence to be like you know what I only get one body so it's part of the team right like yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Um, and when you said flooding it with things that are not helping it, I was like, could be sugar, could be you're a horrible human being yeah. <laughs> needs to pull it together too, yeah. right? Because you're like cortisol, um, apparently is bad for weight loss, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and just, uh, I'm sure there's many more things in your health that it connects to. I'm not the nurse. She's the nurse in case <laughs> anybody didn't know. <laughs> um, well, you, but, like yeah. those negative thoughts and that. I mean, that just, and those constant thoughts, like through the day of like, oh, I just, I did it again. Or, oh, I can't believe I mm -hmm. ate that. Oh, I, I've got to lose weight like that. That mm -hmm. oh, I've got to, that is such stress on your body. And yeah, mm -hmm. it really, it, it's like cortisol when cortisol is high chronically, if you're doing that to yourself all the time, mm -hmm. and you yeah. have other stress in your life. That's chronic. It, yeah leads to stored fat, which mm -hmm. is so sad because then you're just like those, it's really like the negative spiral of like more stress leads to more fat storage, leads to more mm -hmm. negative thoughts needs, you know? And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's important to start with compassion. Like, you know, you always talk about that, like, okay, if mm -hmm. you start with compassion right away, like that just drops Mm -hmm. so, yeah that I was having a hard day I did really want some things to make me feel better of course I did and of course I chose Oreos the Oreos are such a bad guy right now but of course <laughs> I chose Oreos because I have decades of conditioning that the packaging means delicious eh. yeah mm -hmm. yeah um yeah. the other thing that you said was something about occasional finding a way to work with yourself to have occasional mm -hmm. treats the way that I've been doing that is I have to decide 24 hours ahead that I'm going to have it or not and exactly like the amount too right mm -hmm. so sometimes if I see cookies in the staff lounge I'm like okay if you're still there at 1 p.m tomorrow <laughs> right. um then I'm gonna have one or uh, sometimes if I know we're going to a party, I'm like, all right, I will have two of whatever the they have cookies, cake, like mm -hmm. I have two um, or even like small group. And I'm like, oh, it's in 24 hours. We usually have ice cream. Am I going to have ice cream tomorrow? Yes, I am. <laughs> or, um, oh, this weekend we should totally have ice cream while we watch TV. But yeah. if it's in the moment, that saves me from this has been such a terrible day. I need to treat you right now. This is right. And not like, and it saves me from just the mindless, like I'm not even craving this, but it's there. So whatever. Right. Um, and I still have ice cream plenty yes. in my right. life that I don't feel deprived about. Right. Yeah. But it's like, I'm not deprived. I'm just having it in 24 hours. Right. Um, and the like, weight loss coaching that I was taught is like, you do that with everything. Like you wake up in the morning, you eat what you plan the day before you plan your food for tomorrow. And, um, you don't have Brussels sprouts. You go to the store and you buy the Brussels sprouts. Like, you know, that they like went bad or something like you said, you were eating Brussels sprouts today. So like, we're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> and that's if like what you eat and, um, whatever your goal is, maybe weight loss is like such a big deal that it's like, no, we're sticking to this a hundred percent. But even just that little bit of like, I'm going to decide 24 hours in advance has been so helpful for me. Yeah. It just 
not wanting to mindlessly eat sugar that I'm a not even craving and B maybe just emotionally eating and C it's still good. And I want it. Some, I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense of because you're deciding again, you can eat whatever you want. You're just deciding mm-hmm. what you're going to eat and when you're going to eat it. And so mm-hmm. that just builds so much more confidence that you can, you know, make those decisions and you're responsible for yourself and you can do that. Mm-hmm. Not right. And it's the trust with team you thing too, of like, well, I decided I, first of all, I decided I'm only eating things if I decide 24 hours in advance. Right. So every time I stick to that, I'm like, yes, I, I stick to the things I decide. See, mm-hmm. I did it again. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, when I do actually eat the thing, that's another time that it's like, see, I'm, we have sugar. This is not a dictatorship with no fun. Like, yeah. um, yeah. Yeah. You have to have fun. Like if, if you aren't enjoying your plan of how, whatever you're doing, yeah, it, you'll never stick with it because who wants to live a life of no fun, <laughs> you know, like, and I just, that's the thing I keep thinking, like, it really just doesn't have to be so hard and miserable. Like, mm-hmm. it, yeah, it really doesn't, um, right. It really, yeah. Doesn't. Yeah. So that would be a thought, right. That you could catch and go, oh, this has to be hard. And then I feel very like overly determined and then the action is a whole bunch of willpower. And then the result is like, yeah, it was real hard (laughs) and I don't want to do it any ever again anymore. (laughs) Well, and that's my problem with a lot of very extreme things like 75 hard or uh, really extreme diet things. You, You, people complete them and maybe there's a few who keep going with that, you know, forever, but most of it is like, oh my goodness, I, I did it and it was horrible and I'm never doing that again. And yes. so then what do you have left? Like, what do you do next? Like the next hard, awful thing that you don't want to keep going. Like, I just, I'm like, I'm over that. I, I refuse, mm-hmm. like I will do what I can keep doing and what I want to keep doing. Like not even yeah. that I can by like determination, but like, what do I want to keep doing that yes. it actually makes me feel good? I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not taking all my time and energy. And mm-hmm. it's not like what only thing I think about all day. It's it's a lifestyle that I enjoy. And, um, right. and, right. and then like, I think when you get into that mode, I'm always curious about things to add. So I'm always adding new mm. things because mm-hmm. I don't feel overwhelmed all the time. So I'm like, right. like listening yeah. to things. And when I hear something, I don't think, oh, no, I have to add another thing to my, oh, you know, I just think. That's so overwhelming, oh, right. I think that's interesting. I wonder, what, I wonder what would happen if I did that. Like today, you know, I fasted for 17 hours. Not because okay. it's like, yeah. I must fast for 17. It was like, huh, I haven't eaten since seven. It's like 10. We haven't had breakfast yet. I wonder if I could go to noon. Let's just see. Right, right. <laughs> so, um. Once in a while, it's good for you, I hear. Right, right. right. <laughs> um, and yeah. So I, I don't know. I think that's like been fun for me. It's it's fun then to like, oh, let me try lifting these weights. I might hate mm-hmm. it, but I'm going to try it anyway. <laughs> right, right. Because then, then I'll know. Yeah. yeah. And if or I like it, you, ran, you ran for the first time in years, the other day. Yeah. <laughs> same thing, right? right. Yeah. yeah. And I, w- I said something about doing intervals today. And Jeff was like, we're not doing that. We haven't eaten. We're not doing that. I'm like, okay, yeah. good. It's somebody here to keep me grounded so that I'm not like, oh, let's like, try all the things all at once that don't go together. Yes. I, oh goodness. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Gonna have compatible things. Yeah. <laughs> I That's funny too, because I've never thought of 75 hard as a thing to do to get healthier, which is weird because the whole thing is like, you drink a ton of water and you exercise a ton and blah, blah, blah. But I've only ever considered it doing it for myself as like a, like, I will keep this promise to myself thing, Um, which you could do with anything really. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I'm doing it with like standing on my deck every day and taking three deep breaths. Um, So Mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. Um, Okay. Feel like in summary, uh, one willpower doesn't have to be willpower because maybe your body is working against you. And I will say too, I feel like I've seen 
study if somebody like really didn't want to take probiotics for some reason just do it it's so easy but um (laughs) that when you lose weight your gut microbiome does change and when you do power through for some amount of time of not eating the sugar if you have the thoughts that won't just make you go back to it I think that does change your gut health too but there's the slow ways to do it I like shortcuts (laughs) yes well Um, I think the shortcuts make it more likely that you'll actually do it you know and be successful yeah Yeah. exactly um and I don't want to eat kimchi I don't know probably good I I, I mean I heard the doctor say today like I know you don't like this food like but eat a cup of sauerkraut every day and I was like I like sauerkraut just take some capsule eat a cup of sauerkraut every day (laughs) um so one, your body is an important player in willpower. Two, your thoughts can prevent the need for willpower. And three, some good thoughts to keep in your brain for choosing things. What you eat intentionally is um, not beating yourself up, having compassion if you do, eat something you don't want to. I can eat whatever I want to because then you won't feel deprived. Um, I only have one body. Food is information for my body about how to build itself, right? Was that the kind of gist of the food is information? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I mean, mine is like, yeah, I can eat that just in 24 hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, or, and just the curiosity too of like, well, what would it feel like if I just didn't eat that right now? Let's just find out. Um and also the like empowered one what did I say of like I can eat whatever I want to and I'm choosing that I'm not gonna eat that oh and how did I not mention this one of like I'm not missing out I'm opting out yes I love that one yes um that really has helped me a lot because it gives it's like I'm in charge I'm not like missing out like I'm not mm -hmm. allowed I'm missing out it's like Nope, I'm opting out. I don't yeah. need that. I'm choosing mm-hmm. not to. Right now, yeah. tomorrow I can opt back in if I want, but <laughs> you know, it's not forever. Like when you don't take when you take away the forever aspect of it and you're just opting in or out. Um and for some people that might be hard because they want to opt in all the time. <laughs> but right. making the choice, I'm like, I'm just gonna opt out for this time and see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. And the last thing I feel like to summarize is the like we are absorbing cultural messages and advertising all the time whether we want to or not and willpower individual willpower doesn't account for believing and opting into all of that right like that's where the thoughts come into like think different things than what the usual standard cultural and advertising messages are yeah Mm -hmm. And to get real feisty about it, you can learn about the food industry and how they create that desire in you for the food that they're making. And it kind of makes you mad. And then you go like, no, not eating that. Right. (laughs) I'm not getting tricked into eating your perfect potato chip. Right. Yeah. And I'm, if you, if somebody's listening to this and wants to change their thoughts, that would be me. And if somebody's listening to this and wants all of the tips and tricks of how to eat just a little different, just a little bit, then that's you. Yep. Yeah. I'd love to help. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to eat something myself before nap time is over. And <laughs> thank you so much for talking with me because really always fun. when I'm like, poaching you when we go on these rants and it's more fun when it's like and let's just wander through the conversation I don't have to like stick to an agenda of right. poaching you. yeah yeah this was very fun thanks yeah hi I'll see how soon I get it published talk Thank to you later okay bye bye